It's a reasonable question. Why does an antenna tuner work in receive mode as well as transmit mode? Well, we know it does. It's undeniable. The first thing a ham will often do is tune the tuner for maximum noise level. And that setting is usually very close to the proper setting for transmit mode. So it works both ways. Maximum signal transfer from antenna to transceiver and from transceiver to antenna. Now in transmit mode, as covered in previous videos, reflected power from a mismatch at the antenna is reflected back to the antenna by the tuner. Now it's obvious that happens. What's the SWR between the transceiver and the tuner? One to one. There's no SWR, which means no reflected power. So the reflected power has to go somewhere. Now some believe the myth that reflected power is turned into heat in the tuner. That's not true. Tuner losses are minor unless the tuner is poorly designed or made of components that can't handle the current. So why doesn't a tuner also reflect away a receive signal? It's traveling in the same direction as a reflected transmit signal from the antenna to the tuner. The ARRL antenna book says a properly adjusted antenna tuner cancels all reactants in the system. This reactance cancellation results in a net system reactance of zero, establishing resonance in the entire system. In this resonant condition, the generator delivers its maximum available power to the load. So, for a received signal, it's like a clear highway, a tuned system. All the lights are green. A nice, easy journey from the antenna to the receiver. Now, here's how one commenter on this channel, whose YouTube handle is da dit da, puts it. For a received signal, the antenna is the power source, and the transceiver's receiver is the load. The conjugate match provided by the transmatch remains. Thus, the antenna feed line system remains a 50 ohm matched resonance system that efficiently transfers signal power on the feed line to the load receiver. The impedance mismatch at the antenna feed line junction remains. So, some signal power generated by the source antenna is reflected back toward the source antenna. Da da da. So yeah, despite the conjugate match created by the tuner, which then also appears at every place in the antenna system, an impedance mismatch at the antenna remains. So some of the received signal will be reflected back into the antenna. But our transceivers have so much gain in receive mode, it doesn't matter. We often have to turn it down, there's so much gain. So, why in transmit mode, the tuner can tell the difference between a received signal and a reflected signal? Here's an answer from the high priest of antenna and transmission line engineering, Walt Maxwell, W2DU. In transmitter operation, where conjugate coupling is usually used to deliver optimum power to a load through a line, the match is in one direction only, forward. The generator transmitter is matched to the line, but looking back into the generator coupling circuitry, or the antenna tuner, during all times, that the generator is actively supplying power through the conjugate coupling to the line, the line is totally mismatched. Simply stated, as long as the transmitter is pushing power through the tuner out to the antenna, nothing can go back in past the tuner. 
any reflected power sees a huge mismatch, like an open circuit, a do not enter sign. Now in receive mode, that's not the case. There's nothing going out, only the receive signal going in. The direction of traffic is reversed. Or in terms of plumbing, we can think of an antenna tuner as a backflow valve. It allows water to flow in only one direction, not both directions, as long as power is being applied to the tuner from the transmitter. How is an antenna tuner able to perform such feats? Well, a tuner is typically two variable capacitors and a variable inductor. So we can create a huge variety of impedances and phase shifts. When the tuner is properly adjusted, the entire antenna system, consisting of a coax and antenna, is resonant, even if the antenna is non-resonant. The tuner also creates the necessary phase shift to return a reflected wave back to the antenna in phase with the transmitter power. Remember, when a wave of RF arrives at a mismatch at the antenna, part of it is reflected back and also undergoes a 180 degree phase shift. The tuner corrects that phase shift, so it is now in phase with the transmitter power and heads for the antenna. All reflected power reaching the source is returned to the load as part of the forward or incident wave. The only reflected power lost is because of line attenuation during its return to the source and once again during its return to the load. Walt Maxwell, W2DU in QST Magazine. So, if you have a 100-watt transmitter and 25 watts is returned because of standing waves in the line, a mismatch at the antenna, we now have 125 watts heading for the antenna. Now, in past videos, myth-believing hams have said things like, Oh, so you're saying there's a magic power increase. Right. Too bad they don't have a copy of the ARRL antenna book. That way they, they might learn what actually goes on in an antenna system and they could be real ham radio operators. You know, a ham radio license is more than a license to get on 80 meter sideband with your buddies and talk about your gallbladder operation, which is okay. But here's a quote from the FCC on FCC.gov. These services, they call amateur radio a service, present an opportunity for self-training, intercommunication, and technical investigations. The FCC. Technical investigations, like investigating how things work, by reading publications by the American Radio Relay League, for example, and other reputable sources of technical information. You know, you can get a used copy of this book on eBay for about $15. Now, not included as reputable sources are many YouTube videos. I watched one YouTube channel which probably has a lot more subscribers than this one, and I don't care. Or he explained that reflected power is also called common mode current. Completely false. Are you done with your rant? Yeah, I'm done. The antenna book explains the magic power increase is actually called reflection gain, by engineers who know what they're talking about. This enlargement of the forward power is called reflection gain. Reflection gain cancels the reflection loss. How so? Well, when the first RF power wave arrives at the antenna mismatch here, in our example, 
25 watts is reflected back to the tuner and only 75 watts is accepted by the antenna. That's reflection loss. After the 25 watts is reflected back to the antenna in phase with the transmitter power, 125 watts now arrives back at the antenna. 25 watts is reflected back to the tuner and the transmitter's full power of 100 watts is then accepted by the antenna, which means SWR has not caused us to lose anything. Now this, of course, is not taking into account transmission line losses, which are usually small with good quality coax in the HF bands. So the end result is maximum current transfer between the load and the source, be the load and antenna in transmit mode or the receiver in receive mode. You know, before the invention of SWR meters, that's how hams would adjust their antenna tuning systems, tune for maximum current. Well, coming soon, a video explaining how a transmatch can give your transceiver a one-to-one -one SWR, but can't do that on the line from the tuner to the antenna. Consider subscribing to this channel in 73.